1982, the landscape was dotted with many home video game consoles. Out of all the choices on the market, one console stood above the rest as the clear winner. The Atari 2600. That same year, Atari proved that the video game industry was a powerful money-making machine by selling millions upon millions of copies of popular arcade ports, such as Pac-Man and Pitfall. Millionaires were made overnight and quickly adjusted to lives of excess. But as quickly as the industry boomed and people succeeded, it all fell apart. With the release of E.T. in December of 1982, and its poor production, and its abysmal reception, the inevitable crash of 1983 laid on the horizon. But, I'm not here to give a history lesson on the rise and fall of the video game industry. No, I'm here to talk about one of the casualties of the fall, the ColecoVision. you can bring the arcade experience home. Introducing ColecoVision, the most advanced video game system you can buy. It plays more games than any other system. Arcade games with multiple screens like Donkey Kong. Arcade games like Zaxxon with its three-dimensional look. And Venture with 15 different screens. Cosmic Avenger and ColecoVision's new Smurf game. Coming soon, ColecoVision's first expansion module that lets you play all the Atari VCS compatible cartridges. Now you can bring the arcade experience home because your vision is our vision. ColecoVision. More specifically, I'm here to talk about my top five games that were released for the ColecoVision in its first year. Released in 1982, the ColecoVision was the second console sold by Coleco Industries, the first being Telstar in 1978. Being a second generation console, the ColecoVision sported better graphics and cutting edge accessories and hardware. But sadly, the ColecoVision couldn't compete with the giant that was Atari at the time. And sadly, it came at a very, very, very bad time in video game history. It was because of this the ColecoVision suffered price drop after price drop since its inception. And luckily for me, that was one of the only reasons that I can say I had a ColecoVision. It was the only and the first home video console that I owned. To give a top five of the best games that came out in 1982 for the ColecoVision, I have to include the game that came with the system, Donkey Kong. Ah, the title screen, it takes me back. Now, it was a smart idea to package Donkey Kong with the ColecoVision. It was an arcade juggernaut at the time. Oh, man. The colors. The sounds. <laughs> Donkey Kong. I mean, it was one of the most perfect games ever. And to be able to play it at home, man, I felt so privileged. I remember when I got ColecoVision for Christmas, I got a handful of games with it. But Donkey Kong was always, always one of my favorites. And the different maps, stages, however you want to say it. In the arcade, I rarely ever got this far, but at home, I was a king. I was a quarter king, and I was always kicking ass in this game. I'd go back to the arcade, never as good. To this day, Donkey Kong is a staple. He still, I mean, he just had a release on the Nintendo Switch for Donkey Kong Country. Believe me, it's a lot different of a Donkey Kong than I grew up with, but it's still so awesome to see him chugging along along with Mario. 
And it was an awesome surprise to play Mario Odyssey and see the Donkey Kong stage that was in it. Anyway, that's number one on my list. Let's get on to number two. Number two on my list, and in no particular order, is Ladybug. Now, Ladybug is, let's be honest, it's a Pac-Man-esque clone. Where you run through a maze and you are chased by certain beasties. In this game, it's insects. But on the market at that time, in the arcades, Pac-Man was and will be one of the biggest arcade games ever released. So, it goes without saying that there's going to be a lot of people emulating that to try to make a dollar. What was awesome was a lot of these other companies tried different things. Like in Ladybug, you can see here that there's different switch plates in the walls that you can open and close and try to make your way around the maze a little bit easier. You had to use a little bit more skill to try to box in and defend yourself against the insects that were coming. But again, you're running around the maze collecting little dots. There were no power pills in this, but you picked up various items and vegetables and fruits as you went along. Ladybug apparently was a very large hit for Universal in the arcades. I can't say I've ever seen it in an arcade, ever since it was first released till now, when I go into retro arcades. But, for Universal, it was a very large hit. And it was a large hit being on the ColecoVision. And, while we're talking about Pac-Man clones, let's talk about another one. Number three on the list is Mousetrap. Made by a company called Exidy, which I can't say I've ever heard of since this game. Mousetrap put you in a maze like Pac-Man and even Ladybug, and had you go around and try to escape cats. Utilizing the switch plate revolving door method that we saw in Ladybug, Mousetrap allowed you to do the same thing, but you were enticed to trap the cats that you had full reign of the house, if you will, to collect your little pieces of cheese around the map. To emulate Pac-Man just a little bit more than Ladybug did, Mousetrap allowed you to collect a dog bone. In doing so, you could turn into a dog and then chase down and potentially eat the cats that were going around the maze. One of the things I remember is the ColecoVision controller, which was a numeric pad with a joystick. You could slide a little insert over the numbers and one of those had a big button of a dog on it that you could push when you were ready to transform. In later stages there would be things like birds and well just birds that came and would try to pick you off and eat you as a mouse. It just added another bit of stress than having to just worry about the cats. But I had so many fun memories of this game just watching this footage takes me back, seeing that cute little mouse zipping around the maze. Number four on the list was a very huge game for ColecoVision and Sega, and that's Zaxxon. In Zaxxon, you played a spaceship that zoomed through a map and had you avoid obstacles, and also take out other ships and gun turrets. And it always reminded me of going on the Death Star run. That's how I always pretended when I was playing it. Granted, the ship didn't look anything like an X-Wing, but I used my imagination. It was a hard game. It was games like this that set ColecoVision apart from the 2600, as this was groundbreaking for the time. In 1982, this felt like you were playing a PlayStation 4 because it was arcade accurate. 
And like Donkey Kong, it was one of those games where I ruled at home. I was the most awesome pilot in Zaxxon ever. But then when I'd get to the arcade, I couldn't get halfway through the first stage. Zaxxon is still a classic today. Now number five on the list could be seen as just a novelty. The Smurfs, Rescue and Gargamel's Castle. This was a Coleco produced game, but it actually appeared on the 2600 in 1982. Now the one thing that looking back at this game, it is a lot like a platformer. It could have been one of the first. Now you could also say Pitfall kind of was a platformer of sorts, but the Smurfs offered up much more variety in the stages and the obstacles that you had to overcome. You had to duck enemy attacks, jump up on little rock outcroppings, and jump over fences. All in your quest to rescue the other Smurfs that were captured by Gargamel. Now, the graphics really aren't that bad. When you think about the Atari 2600 at this time and their very blocky, abstract interpretations of characters and situations, this was damn near cutting edge. I have a lot of memories of this game, and of the Smurfs in general. This game spoke to me at that time, as I was watching Smurfs on TV and playing with the little figurines at home. Thanks for watching. This has been my top five picks from the ColecoVision in 1982. In part two of this, we'll go over the games that came out in 1983, when ColecoVision started to really step up their game. Unfortunately, no matter what they did, they could never take out Atari and a struggling industry at the time. So, we'll get into that next time. See you then. My name's Rob. This is my side of the laundry room, and this has been Sedimental. Sedimental.